several weeks of heavy rains in Iran has caused massive flooding and huge widespread devastation. 70 people have been killed, hundreds of thousands of people have been made homeless and it's taken over many cities, many villages, around 2,000 cities and villages are underwater and uh, it's affected many parts of the country. It's not just in one area of the country, uh, it's about 26, 27 provinces of 31. So it's caused really widespread, massive uh, devastation. Absolutely. The, the, in some parts, complete infrastructure has been uh, destroyed roads, bridges, uh, home, people's home, and it's still continuing. And still, uh, e where places the water has receded, you'll see the amount of destruction. And uh, so many people have lost their homes. And those who haven't actually lost their homes, they still have a, a structure. Uh, you'll see the, the, the amount of mud, mud in, in, yeah. uh, uh, up to uh, knee. And uh, there is no infrastructure uh, of support. Uh, there was no inf infrastructure to prevent the flooding, and also where there, there was there were flood uh, there was flooding, there were no in infrastructure to support people. There is no. It just our biggest belief how a society can function without minimum support structure. Yeah, and this is something that a lot of people are saying who are in these flooded areas, these devastated areas. They're saying that uh, you know the Iranian regime has been very. Um, quick at providing support to Syria, to Gaza, to Lebanon, but it, when it comes to uh, supporting people in the country who are devastated by the floods, there's really no proper response taking place. And like uh, previous earthquakes, it's really the public who've gone and stepped forward and trying to help alleviate some of the suffering. But again, the public can only do so much, Absolutely. really. Absolutely. You, you could see how people were struggling to uh, create uh, manual, effectively, dams in front of the floods. Uh, and there were nobody, no infrastructure, no government official or body were there to support them. And where there were consequences, uh, there's nobody to distribute water uh, or any basics uh, of, of living food. Uh, there's nothing and people have been left with no support and uh, the only people have, after a few days only the popular uh, um, self-organized group has started to uh, reach some of the places who have been, have been uh, surrounded by water and uh, provide them with basic sort of food and water um, and, and of such yeah. mm. and uh, of course it's interesting because you were saying earlier that there are um, you know, a lot of religious reasons given for the floods. For example, you were saying that, uh, uh, you know, the government has said that if uh, the supreme spiritual leader Khamenei wasn't in power, things would be a lot worse. Yes, because... As the, if the, it's very the, good now yes, with because him in power. Almighty is very angry with the Iranian people, and that's why. So it's a natural flood, and that's something we have to, we have to take, and there's, there's nothing to do about it. So or, or to prevent it, they've, they've come and they started throwing holy sand into water. I mean, if you have a government which is philosophy is based on religion this is what's going to happen yeah and so therefore it, it it's it's also a way of preventing uh, their own mismanagement and corruption to be targeted by saying it's a natural disaster well it is a natural disaster but there's a lot of man-made reasons why it has taken uh, you know, it has caused so much devastation. And one, of course, is corruption. Uh. You know, one of the things that um, a lot of people are talking about is the fact that the government, the regime, has given lots of building contracts to the uh, so-called revolutionary guards, the pastoran, their own cronies, uh, you know, their friends and family members, people who don't have expertise in building poles, in building bridges, in building infrastructure and that's why the infrastructure is completely just swept away without any uh, you know in a, in a split second basically yeah absolutely and you'll see so much of the um, forest uh, forestation has been uh, cleared to be villas or um, in industrial sites despite the fact that people clearly everybody knows if you remove all the trees and uh, and forests from from the mountains and the hills the consequence is going to be when the, when it's raining it's going to be uh, end into flood and shifting of uh, a, a lot of land and that's exactly what's happened no wonder they've, they've started to arrest so many of the environmentalists uh, in iran in the last uh, couple of years because they've gone and evidence the uh, the corruption and had a f uh, uh, the, the level of de deforestation uncontrolled deforestation for to make quick fox by the 
uh, relatives and you know, officials of the uh, corrupt Islamic regime in Iran. In addition, of course, to the corruption and to the massive deforestation uh, and also destroying uh, uh, everything from mountain, mountainous areas to uh, the forests and the natural resources, uh, there hasn't been basic maintenance done. So, you know, ensuring that riverbeds are safe, for example, uh, that mechanisms for overflow are um, sort of kept up and maintained and that they're in working condition. Yeah, and, and in addition to deforestation, massive deforestation and corruption, there's no maintenance of the, any uh, infrastructure. The riverbeds have not been dredged and cleared, so naturally the water comes in and overflows. Even one of the dams, they, they, they couldn't open the doors because they were not maintained. So, uh, so the dam overflowed and a huge amount of water was released into, uh, um, I I into cities and the surrounding uh, villages and, um, and, and, and farming land and destroyed so many people's lives. And of course, uh, it is a natural disaster. Clearly, uh, this has to do with rains, it has to do with flooding, but it didn't need to, it doesn't need to have this sort of devastating impact if there hadn't been corruption, if there hadn't been mismanagement, deforestation. Uh, so clearly, you know, this is something that, again, along with its long track record of human rights violations and really making people's lives so impossible in Iran. Here's another example of what this regime has done when it comes to basic, uh, you know, the basic environment, maintaining it, defending it, protecting it, so that these sort of tragedies and calamities don't take place.